of the Cherry Pearls podcast and this is a special upload that Robin and I decided to do on how to set the colors in your yarn. Uh, if you watched our previous podcast you'll see that I had a little bit of unhappiness with my new three color cashmere shawl that one of the colors led onto one of the lighter colors and I want to make sure that that doesn't happen again in future projects so I've asked Robin, our resident yarn dyer, to Hi. show me how to set the yarn. She's behind the camera right I'm now. I'm back here. <laughs> so anyway, we were just going to show you the process of how it can be done. Uh, what I did in um, with the yarn previously in the Three Color Cashmere Shawl, I did a vinegar soak, thinking that that would set the color in the yarn. But I did not know that the heat needed to be involved in order to properly make sure the color set. So um, we're going to give this a try and make sure that the colors don't bleed again. I do want to let you know that I am no way implying that this yarn will bleed. I have not, never worked with this yarn. This yarn is Green Knits Nam in the colorway Violet. This is a skein that I bought at DFW and um, I've never used it before. So I have no idea if it's going to bleed. Um, but I want to make sure that it doesn't because the color that I'm putting with it is a gold color and therefore lighter and I don't want to take that chance. So um, it, this is a lovely yarn. I know it's going to stay beautiful and I just want to make sure my colors stay put. So um, come along with us and we'll show you the process. Okay, the first step um, according to our resident yarn dyer, Dr. <laughs> Robin, uh, is to go ahead and unskein the yarn. So that's what I'll do first. So go ahead and, why isn't this unwrapping? Okay, here we go. Go ahead and unskein your yarn and make it into, you know, your usual giant loop. You'll take it and put it into a colander and then run cool water over it for a couple of minutes. Um, this is a super wash, so I could technically pick it up with my hands and kind of squeeze it and let the, uh, you know, see how much uh, rinse is, color's coming out of it. But in case that you have a yarn that is a non-super wash, you don't want to do that because you take the chance of felting it. So you'll let the water run over it for several minutes, making sure that the yarn gets good and soaked. Okay, the next step is to take a pan. This is an aluminum cake pan and you're going to pour some water into it. You put it enough to where once you put your skein in that the uh, skein pin would be fully submerged in the water. Then you're going to take some citric acid. I bought this um, in the canning section at Walmart but you can find it anywhere that they sell canning supplies and you're going to put a tablespoon of citric acid into the water. Um, according to Robin it is not an exact science so if you use a little too much, it's not going to hurt anything. So pouring it into the water and then I'll give it a stir just to get it to dissolve. All right, the next step is to go and uh, take, get your water from the colander, gently wring the uh, yarn, well not wring, gently squeeze the yarn to get the remaining water out of it and gently put it into the pan. Try to get the yarn in one layer if possible, you know, not wad it up too much, and make sure that the yarn is able to be fully submerged. Robin said that this is enough water. I actually could uh, take a little bit of this water out, but I'm just gonna leave it. What I neglected to tell you in the beginning was prior to beginning this process, you need to turn on your oven and set it for 300 degrees Fahrenheit. And once your oven is heat it and your yarn is in this um, in the pan with the citric acid you're ready to place it into the oven okay once your yarn has uh, been in the oven for 30 minutes you will take it out and let it cool off make sure your yarn is very cool because if you do the next step with the yarn warm, you'll shock it and possibly felt it, especially if it's a non-superwash yarn. So you'll pull the yarn out of the pan. This um, 
has a tiny, tiny, the tiniest of purple tint to the water. You can probably see it as I pour it out. Um, so there was a tiny bit of bleeding, but who knows if that would have really bled out into my other yarn. Um, since I didn't knit with it, there's no way to know that. The other yarn for my three color cashmere shawl that bled, um, the water in that one ran clear and this one was very faintly lavender. I don't know if this would have bled on the upcoming project, but at least this way I know I've done everything that I could and I am no, in no way implying that the dyer did not set the color properly. I am doing this solely because I want to make sure that I have done everything that I could do to keep it from bleeding next time. So after you take the yarn out um, of the pan, you're going to run it cool water over it to make sure any residual dye rinses out. And the water is looking clear. I'm putting a little bit of wool wash over it. I'm using the kookaburra. And you just uh, drizzle it over the top so that you can let that run through your, through your yarn and rinse it off. Keep rinsing until, you know, all the wool wash is rinsed out. And then you'll hang this up to dry. And in this way, I'll know that I've done everything I could to save the project and I won't have issues again with bleeding yarn. If it bleeds after all of this, at least I won't feel as bad because I know I've done everything I could. I hope this video helps if anybody um, had any questions on how to set the dye in their yarn. Um, Please let us know in the down below, um, in the comments below, or in our Ravelry group if you have any questions, or if there are any other videos you'd like us to do a tutorial on. Um, just let us know, and we hope this helps. Happy knitting! Bye.